So, recognizing the worth of being a human being, that prepares me to be a seeker on this path. And the first 10 questions, if you answer, you lie down, you repeat it, and just you lie down on the bed or sitting on a lazy chair and you start thinking about it. So that very thinking helps to assimilate the knowledge. Otherwise, we will stuck on the same, you know, after the session. Uh, I will try to settle the score with a lot of people outside and I enter into the same stuff. If it happens, then definitely we are not learning the Eastern wisdom. Take one example, you know, what is the goal? A goal of life is the self-knowledge that we have understood. Goal of life is to self-discovery. And what is the common desire? Common desire is also peace and happiness. Now, am I living consciously from moment to moment? The moment the mind says, you know, this guy is crazy, I become aware and I withdraw myself. If I do not withdraw myself, then it is an intellectual understanding. You are right, you are right, and then I am wrong. In every situation, even. So what is the end of the suffering and the permanent happiness? Obviously, it is. we have already discussed it in Nirvana. And what is nirvana? Is this self-knowledge? Now see, I have assimilated this knowledge that my nature is happiness and I will not allow the outer situation and relations to create a sense of dissatisfaction and unhappiness in me, in my relations, in the outer situations in my life. If I do not think, it will never happen. Then what will happen weekly? I will do the practice. I'm very calm and relaxed to get into the stress again. That is very important, my friends. And then we take up the fifth and the sixth question. This self, what exactly is this self-knowledge? So self-knowledge is what I think I am, that is not I am. What I am think, I think that I am worthy of suffering situation, mental states and the conditions and my relations always give pressure to me and I am suffering. So we have to explore how I am not worthy of suffering and that takes it line, that takes it on. We pick up each and every principle and we understand that I'm not at all worthy of suffering. So it only happens when we recognize the worth of being a human being. I will take up that subject a little later. So then the we have already understood that what is, how many types of this self-knowledge and you see the, how the masters has done the hair splitting analysis that there is a direct self-knowledge and there is an indirect self-knowledge. So indirect self-knowledge, the teacher passes on, you study, there is a repeat listening, you do the practice, you find some changes in your life and you find that state of the calmness and the peace in your life. So that indirect knowledge is translated by the seeker in daily life. And the people, you start feeling the change in behavior and your attitude. Again, understand the behavior is outer expression and the attitude is in the mind. Now, if I have only understood intellectually these principles, but it has not been assimilated, the attitude will not change. Did you get it? The attitude will not change. 
from where this attitude uh, translates into behavior from the past impressions that I already have it. So when the knowledge is assimilated, then what happens? My past impressions undergoes a change and that changes the attitude. If the attitudinal change is not there, I may be doing the practice of mindfulness or meditation for hours together after the meditation, after the effect of the pill is over, I will become the same person again. So then I'm using the meditation as a pill. That is also okay if I take it very easily, casually. So we have to understand the very nature of the mind, how it is behaving, how it is responding to this learning. How indirect knowledge of the real self takes place. And there uh, we were just talking. Learning is understanding. What is understanding? Understanding is that you, you, you understand the cause and effect relationship. What is knowledge? You cause and effect relationship. You find any question when you are clear how long it takes me to reach to your house so the time and the distance in the traffic you see the cause and effect you find out anything understanding simply means that i should go into the cause and effect relationship now i'm already stressed because of you so i have to find out i have to find out whether the cause lies in the other person or the situation or cause lies in me that we don't find. <laughs> we don't find. Then we say, you know, there's outer people and relations and the society and, and what not. Outside the world is responsible for all my stress. So because, you know, there is a misconception. So when we live in that misconception, that it builds those impressions and that defines my attitude and behavior is expressed. I believe you all are getting it. So Eastern wisdom or meditation or mindfulness, just not closing your eyes or focusing on the breath. I have to understand the cause and effect relationship. And ultimately, when I practice meditation, I had a revelation. I have an understanding. I have a realization. I'm not worthy of suffering. Because of others because of the world outside. Now, if my honey is very cruel, even then, I'm not worthy of suffering, to tell you, tell you frankly. To tell you frankly. Now, you don't know, I have been carrying the burden of my stress for the last 10 years. It is an animal mind. It, it is not worth being a human being. So what is the worth of being a human being? So one master says that we have to understand, we have to understand while learning the Eastern wisdom that what exactly is the listening? Listening means we are allowing the knowledge to settle in the intellect and then the intellect is ready to apply. Ready to apply. You have created, say for example, a lot of negative images about your honey and honey. Honey approaches you with love, but your mind is already filled with those imagined responses, so you react. So there comes the intellect, it says, no, hold on. I have to change my attitude. This possibility only lies with the human being. No other living species has this possibility. So if I apply this possibility, I am worthy of being a human being. I don't apply that possibility. I don't, don't translate that possibility into a right perception then my attitude does not change. 
does not change. So this master says there are three things that are rare indeed found in the human being. Rare. And if they are found, we are on the journey of becoming a seeker. And then the master also says, it is because of the grace of the God. You are listening these principles for 10 years and there is no change. Well, other guys listening just in a one session and they undergo a change. One psychotherapist from New Jersey attends my other session, uh, recently joined, and just in two months, You'll be surprised. He sends the summary of the entire talk and ask me to check it if I have understood it correctly. And that I got an idea. I said, oh, this is really worth. And I spoke about it that when you listen to it, so, you know, how come this, this person uh, got this ability? So there we add, it is due to the grace of the God. We can also develop that. So what are the three things that are rare indeed? First is the human birth. We are born as a human being, so I should act as a human being. We have do's and don'ts. Animals do not have do's and don'ts. You have your pets, they remain naked in your house. We have do's and don'ts. <laughs> we have do's and don'ts. You see that? That is a, 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 who who... Who follows the do's and don'ts? Intellect. Why it follows the intellect only in the, in, the, in the human being? Because I have a free intellect and a free will. What do you mean by that? All the animals have the common desires that we are fully aware of. They do not have a will to change that desire. We have a free intellect. That is why we also have a will. No, not this time. No, I will not be angry. I will not be agitated. Do, are you understanding that? So you see that that makes you a seeker. So the first is the human birth because of the human intellect. And second thing that I have a clarity about the goal of my life. You are absolutely busy. You go into anxiety. You get stressed. You are tired. You are not clear about the goal of your life. You have a lot of challenges in your relations. You have a lot of problems with your situation, the world outside. You are not a seeker. You are not clear about the goal of your life. You are absolutely busy. You are doing the same thing again and again and expecting a result. It is because you are not clear about the goal of life. Do you see how the goal of life should be translated into my life? And when I'm clear about the goal of life is just to secure permanent peace and happiness. You said me something. Should I say anything to you? Should I react? Should I hesitate myself? No. That attitudinal change comes when the knowledge is assimilated. So he, this master lived almost 2000 years ago. So he says three things which are rare indeed found in the human being. The first is the recognizing that this is a human birth. Human birth. I am a human being. I can find out the cause and effect relationship in every event, in every situation. Otherwise, what it takes to blame others, what it takes, how much time it takes, how much time it takes to blame and complain and react to others. It takes a lot of time and a patience to learn not to react. I believe you all are getting it. It's a very important point of the human birth. And it goes simultaneously with the second uh, grace is that I longing. He said longing for liberation. So in this part of the world, I said, what exactly is the goal of life? Am I using the means as a goal of life? Means means the wealth cannot buy happiness. I marry. Marriage cannot have a certification that 
of happiness or even divorce is not a certification of happiness happiness is within me that sense of clarity that is what is known as uh, and then the third grace uh, in a traditional sense we say a protecting care of a perfect a good master who teaches you from the text who does not teach anything on his own why why the knowledge of the eastern wisdom the goal is the self knowledge more than 3000 masters have validated this knowledge again and again and again for the last 10000 years every master have repeated the same knowledge with a different expression and ultimately every master says no i have learnt it from my master so one should appreciate when the teacher is teaching from the text it means the existing knowledge i should have more faith i should have belief pending inquiry oh, i have believed that my nature is permanent peace and happiness that is the goal of life let me start thinking about it well, when i am not thinking uh, the first rare uh, grace is lost then i am not a human being let us dig little deeper are we responsible to be born as a human being find the cause and effect are we responsible to be born as a human who knows i should have been born as a mosquito and gone a mosquito sitting on your head and you said done your life is gone so at least you know you should have a clear uh, understanding we do not know whether i will be born as a human being i do not know who will be who would who would be my parents in which country in which city in which relationship in which family where i would be born and we start blaming our parents you see it's not worth human being i i did not find the cause and effect parents did not have the even the choice so when i understand the cause and effect and i said no you know it has just happened so there the master says i should have a total acceptance where i am born which parents whether the parents are cruel or not whether if uh, anyone if they are cruel i became a human being i can use the free intellect i found the cause and effect they do not have a right no they do not have they do not know whether this crazy guy will be born to a particular parents who constantly blames them at the time of the birth if the parents knew that this guy is going to be crazy after their parents when the parents will take care of him helpless we don't see that you see this is the intellectual understanding i have i'm finding the cause and effect so now you see the other side of it other side of the mind comes down oh yes you are right this is the ultimate cause they do not know i should be born in blaming them or the parents you know once we are mature they start cursing us ah uh, he or she doesn't listen to me so i change my entire attitude you know once that cause and effect is found there is an understanding so now there the master uses another logic they say you are born to a particular parents who are cursing you because of your previous birth impressions carried forward you lived your previous life so just for the sake of understanding we will you we will understand it's a deviation but we will understand what it means by the previous birth or just use the current birth 
I've been reacting again and again. Uh, I've been comparing with my fellow friend. You know, he is living such a rich and luxurious life. My parents, why didn't you earn money to make me live a luxurious life? You see, we put a wrong logic. So that is why the master uses the word previous birth and the current impressions. And once you understand this, your mind becomes very free. So yes, yes, that is perfect. They don't have a, what they are doing, it is because of their past impression. It is because of their attitude. Whether I am born in a humble family or rich family, it is not because of me. Look at this. That is why they say it's grace. I can think, I can understand. I can understand the situation and the people outside and the relations outside. I can understand that the situation outside cannot dictate me. Well, if the parents are poor, let me earn money. What, what's the problem? Let me prove my worth and help my parents. No, no, no. They are, my parents have not done anything for me. First few years, if they had left you, think of the state, whether we would have been alive or not. Whether they have done out of attachment, that is their problem. And that is also a grace that I'm still living. I've been saying again and again, free will, intellect. We, As a human being, I have a free will in the intellect. I can make a choice what to do and what not to do. <clears throat> what to do and what not to do. Now see the cause and effect. <clears throat> I start blaming you. Give me three benefits of blaming you. That will, does that make me happy? Every time you come and I react to you, does that make me happy? Give me three benefits. There is no benefit. So every time you come to me and I, I have a big face, I am ready to react. You know, that is another attitude that we have created. And especially with the near and the dear ones. Do you agree? Say yes. With the near and dear ones. You, you cannot have a luxury to have a big face with me. Okay, you keep it big face, you know, who cares? You? Who cares? But you force others to care you because of your sadness. Do you see that? Because of the attitude. We don't want to change our attitude. With near and the dear ones in my personal and professional life, obviously you are still gathering and accumulating these impressions in your life, and that is not pre that is preventing you to live in peace and calmness. Think, my friend. I have been repeating again and again, Re listening, learning directly from the teacher is one thing. Repeat listening, writing it, contemplating and reflecting. When the greater the contemplation, deeper the contemplation, I can bet you within a week you will experience the change in your attitude. And in that state one day you will recognize what the heck I was doing. I was reacting. It did not bring anything. And now I'm so calm. Even the person is the same before me. That is the beauty of this Eastern wisdom. Introduce the God. Introduce any God, you know. Just in, we introduce the God. Let us use the God. Why? God, you have given me this situation, which is the best situation I can have it. But I have, my honey is not so good. Okay, let me learn endurance. Let me have the endurance. Let me learn how not to be affected by him or her. So the concept of God we introduce here 
to change our attitude. I'm not saying, you know, talking about any particular God and etc. It is not required. So once we are clear about these 10 questions that I discussed in a couple of these sessions, when the mind is clear, when mind is very receptive, only when we understand about the three graces and the 10 questions, the mind is receptive. Then the teacher of the Eastern wisdom says, we have to recognize what is false in me. What is that false I? The false I is responsible for my stress and the suffering. The real I is because the real I is all of the, of the is all of the nature of the peace and happiness. So every time I move into the false I, I remember that I have to move to the real I. So the seeker becomes more curious, you know, how to move in this situation. From anxiety to calmness, it is done by the ignorance to wisdom. So we say ignorance, it is, there is a misconception. We have a wrong notion, who am I? No, I'm a husband, you know, after all, you should listen to me. Are you a born husband? Or a born wife? Then you see the negative issues enters in your life. It enters into a conflict, you know, I have been, you know, anyhow, I have accepted this. You know, what should I do? Or divorce, or fight. You remove the label of being a husband and a wife, and then you talk to him and her and see what happens. Now attitude is totally different. Now you see your honey objectively. You have separated. You are not... You are not subjected to what they say. That is the misconception we all have. We don't realize it. Why? Three grace. First grace is being a human being. So we have to see and understand whether we are really a human being. And the third line says, you know, the Eastern wisdom, this knowledge gives you a freedom from the death, fear of the death. Not only the freedom from the death, but freedom from the fear of the death. Freedom from the stress and the suffering. That is ultimate goal of this Eastern wisdom. Think. We need to think, my friends. If we do not think, then the problem remains the same. And when the problem remains the same, then we have the same challenges. Then we see that the same problems are repeated again. And again. You became, for example, you became upset with any near and the dear ones. How many times? I don't remember, maybe a thousand times. Should I think myself to change, not to get upset? No, no, I don't think. You are responsible for it. I don't think that. The entire Eastern wisdom gives you a new perspective to think and speak and act in your daily life. Are, are you listening? Are you understanding that? It gives you a new perspective. So where lies the confusion? I cannot divorce because uh, we have a common house. We cannot live separately. Now that is, so there is a lot of confusion. Neither I can live together, not, nor I can be separate. See, and what is that confusion? Confusion because he is my husband or she is my wife or whatever it is, whatever the relation is. So that confusion creates the conflict, conflict creates the tension, and it builds up, accumulates the impressions, and that is a, that becomes your attitude expressed in the behavior. Done. 
there is one couple anywhere you know in the united states and i don't want to mention their name so they decided to part with but they had one house which has five or six rooms so they have chosen that two rooms each one for wife and husband and three rooms they rented so they are living in the same house they are living separately they have already divorced <laughs> So at least as at the level of the financial finances, you have chosen the right path. You see, you have chosen the right path. So a step forward to see the cause and effect relationship, to have a clear understanding. So their parents, you know, also knows me and when we talk to one another, we, we just laugh and we see what kind of a person they are. Think. So when I give an example of this honey and the couple, it can be applied anywhere in relationship to my parents and the friends and the kids the outer situation, my personal and the professional life. Three graces should work together. I have to invoke these graces. I have to create an environment in my mind to allow the grace to work in my life. And the moment you allow these graces to work in your life, from the day one, the life changes. I can bet you you just try this just do an experiment let us start close your eyes my friends close your eyes be and find out the most comfortable position of your body whatever the position you want to adopt it is okay and check in a line all the parts of the body so that you experience the comfort. Did you do anything to be comfortable? No, you became aware only. Oh, yes, I just became aware that where is the discomfort and I removed it. Same way, where is the stress? You remove it. My friends, this is what it is. Oh. Did you have that level of contemplation and reflection? You will find the life changes. Just it has changed now. But we go through a process to help the mind to settle in that knowledge. And I made a very simple process of that. I said, look at the neck joint, feel sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Look at uh, the shoulder joints. You, so looking means you are aware, you are attentive, you are feeling the sensation, and that sensation leads you sensation, comfort, and steadiness. You are you have still not doing anything. Your understanding results into it. I believe you are getting it. Looking at uh, the hip joint being there, feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. The entire body, entire body from the top of the head to the toes being there, feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. So you see that how easy you can get out of that discomfort zone, either caused by the body or the emotional emotions. For that, we need a commitment. And then I use the word being carefree as the next step. And being carefree for the time being, allow these thoughts to come and go. Don't become that thought is being carefree. 
And then I made a very simple understanding that you are an observer of all those unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. And you will discover you have the impressions of those unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. So those impressions create an imagined reaction. You get attached to these thoughts. So what I said, lane number one, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts are coming and going. And then Second lane is the observer. In the moment you observe, observer means what? I am always different from what I am doing. Do you understand? I am always different from what is happening. What is happening? Thoughts are coming and going. So I am different from it. So the moment you find that you are different, you are an observer. And the moment you are an observer, you separated the unwanted thoughts and feelings. At this moment, you enter into the lane three instantly. What is the lane three? It is calmness. You feel, oh, it is not affecting me. Yes. If it is a reality for you, you are wonderful. Even if it is not a reality, still you are wonderful. Why should I say otherwise? You have to make an effort. You are already doing the sessions regularly. So now we go a little deeper. We can go a little deeper in a passive way or in an active way. Active way gives a temporary state of the mind which is deeper than the present now. But it is, gives you only a temporary status. Why? So that we can go deeper. And there are thousands of the steps. I have been using a couple of these steps. So you are looking inside the forehead. Are you clear? Yes. You are looking into the space. You are clear. And there you drop, mentally say Om Shanti. So you are, you are changing the track of the mind by dropping Om Shanti. Om Shanti simply means I am real self and the real self is peace. While you start, on the other compartment of the mind is started, you start breathing. Quick and gentle, short breath into the chest until you experience the change until you experience the change keep on doing it you see how easy it is to follow these steps through understanding and clarity i'm giving such a clear steps you see that i'm i'm following the uh, cause and effect so just keep on doing
And now just stop the reading. You may find a variety of uh, experiences. So we go with those. We live into that sensation and the experiences and instantly let us introduce the mantra. Means to discover how to think. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Let, may there be happiness for all. I have already discussed in detail. You should start thinking the same way I'm thinking for you that happiness is the essential nature of all the living species, including my near and the dear ones, they are searching happiness by becoming angry, agitated, reacting. Because I'm learning Eastern wisdom, I have no right. I have to carry the burden of others and also of myself in the beginning. Why? Until the mind changes. I believe you're getting it. I'm giving another interpretation. That is the beauty of these mantras. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Let, May there be peace for all. Ask yourself how long you have been searching for permanent peace. You tried all the means to be in peace. Did you get it? No. That's why you are attending these sessions. Now this Eastern wisdom is showing you the path. Shouldn't I have a faith? You have to hammer your mind so that you start repeat listening and learning every day. You see that point. So I'm using the free intellect to make a choice daily so that the time comes my mind changes. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Oh, may there be completeness in all. So I'm complete in myself? The answer is big yes, because we feel we are incomplete. So we make an effort outside to build up a relationship in the world and ultimately all of a relationship. You already know it, what happens to them. So sense of incompleteness results into the sense of insecurity and a fear and anxiety and the dual duality in a country. So if I remove that sense of incompleteness from me, which lives in my mind, the life is going to change. Sarvesham, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Let there be an auspiciousness for all. So that auspiciousness is the grace. And that grace is always present. I'm not ready to receive it. My mind is not prepared to receive it. It is always descending into my head, into my heart, into my life all the time. Also, but I'm not feeling it because I have to prepare myself. So once we have this way of thinking, you know, you see the Eastern wisdom helps us to, to understand how to think. Understand this point. And now let us see after contemplation and reflection in this mantra, just check it. Look at the head and the neck. Be aware. Experience the sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Look at 
the right arm. So looking means you are feeling, you are experiencing sensation, relaxation and stillness. Looking at the left arm, <clears throat> sensation, relaxation and stillness. Looking at the chest and the belly, sensation, relaxation and stillness. Looking at the right leg, <clears throat> you're just looking, you're not doing anything. Are you not surprised and amazed? <clears throat> Just by looking. Experience the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Look at the left leg. <clears throat> Look at the left leg sensation, relaxation and stillness. <clears throat> the entire body from the top of the head to the toes, sensation, relaxation and stillness. In that state, we undergo a change in our attitude because now what I'm going to say and to speak comes out of that sense of sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Otherwise, what happens? The past impression rebounds, reacts. It changes into our expression in our daily life. So in that moment, you do need not to do anything. Just keep on looking at the breath. The breath goes in and comes out. That's all. Just experience that sense of the freedom. You're casually but attentively looking at the incoming and the outgoing breath. And Shanti 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 Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both your palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. 
no knowing means that you now you are using the intellect to know it and bring the hands down we'll share our experiences and if you have any question we'll take up that question also so how are you sophie a very good Jewish, thank you um it's interesting because images come along and I mean, I guess they're like thoughts, but are, are they like past impressions? Yeah. Any thought and every thought has to do with the past impressions. So either they manifest in the form of a thought supported by a feeling, or they also manifest in the form of images. Hmm. So let it come, let them go. Right. So when but we, do they? Yeah. Can they inform me of of past impressions? That and is a, become, yeah, yeah. You, you become aware of them, and then you can get rid of them. That is what is known as the grace of the God. That you have been able to be aware of those past impressions. They will result into some form of anxiety and reaction in the future. So that very awareness helps me to be separate from them. Yes, that is how we understand the grace. How are you, John? Hey, Jerish. Well, I have to say, I was probably more focused on my back pain than I was the meditation. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yes. You see that that is what happens in the future journey. We understand how to deal with the physical pain and the emotional pain. But unless we do the pre first step, we become a seeker, then we understand there are a lot of uh, simple principles in spite of an extreme pain, you can still be away from the suffering caused by the pain. So the pain, it takes place in the body, body is inert. So who experiences the suffering? It is the mind. Can I bring an end to the suffering in spite of I have a pain? That is a very bigger and a higher step. It is possible. It is a hundred percent possible. So first we have to lay a foundation. We will definitely be following that. How are you, uh, Charlie? Following up on what Sophie said, I, I've been thinking a lot this week, or experiencing a lot this week. I'm just about to go to England, and it's the uh, sale of the home that I grew up in, and almost immediately I feel sadness and, and, and uh, emotional pain. Yeah. And I see it, and I think, gosh, you know, I've been reacting like this for almost 60 years. It's not something that ends overnight. So the pain can't end or the grief can't end just because I see it. But I'm hoping the very fact that I see it is enabling a change, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes a sense coupled with what we have learned today. We have no control over birth parents, country, city, relations we are we are we were born and we grew up with. Then what? What how the intellect should move? I have no control. Should I learn from it or should I continue with the emotional pain? So in the Western uh, in the Western 
in the West, what people say that, oh, because you had a very crazy childhood, you were not aware, you did not know what is happening to me. It is a part of the ignorance. So in the West, what we say, we dig deep inside, we keep on remembering those moments of the sadness and the grief and the reaction, and then we say, oh, we are treating you. Not possible at all. Forget about it. It is not at all possible. It will never happen. And that resulted into a lot of challenges in our psychological and emotional life. That is why we talk of split personality, schizophrenia, and depression, and more than 3,000 disorders. <clears throat> Let me be very clear. There should be a clear intellectual understanding. If I had controlled my birth to a particular parents, there would not have been any problem. I don't have a control. Now, what should I learn from them? What the Sophie, Sophie was saying that those thought and images comes to my mind. Let me become aware. And I have to choose whether I should choose them to continue the same state of the sadness or I should drop them. The moment you drop it, you feel light instantly. But yes, I told you, unless we follow this journey as told by the masters, we do not reach to that state of peace and calmness. It can be dropped. Did I talk anything about myself? No. Why should I talk about those in events? I learn from them. I use them for my advantage. So I don't want to use them for my advantage. I had an emotional pain. How long? For the last 50 years. That is why I am sad. Does that make any sense? It does not make any sense. But we force our mind, no, it makes a sense. I try to cover up something deep inside me that I'm not going to tell you what. You have to find out. How are you, Mir? <laughs> I The clarity of, of your words tonight went very deep for me. Very and good. I've heard so many things from you that are so powerful, but somehow <clears throat> I could get there more tonight and truly take in what you were saying and know that I can change. Yes, that's the positive side that I can change. So what I can change, you see that? I have those emotions, Charlie. I Again, I'm stressing on each and one. I have those emotions. They are in the form of a desire and the emotional pain. And on the other side, when I say I can change, I have a will. From where that will has come? From the understanding. I didn't say that you believe me. So if the will takes over, those events and situations, the life changes. So it takes time, but if we are committed. That is all. Thank you very much. Thank we will meet again.